anybody who's um, coming in, you'll need a block this morning or some kind of book or just something that you could squeeze or that you could hold. Um, so it's not too heavy if you're grabbing a book. Uh, it might just be like the shape of a block. And we're gonna start, um, I mean, we've got time. There's a, there's a couple minutes left, but we're gonna start in um, a seated position. So you might also like to find something um, that helps uh, being in a seated position more comfortable. So that could be a, a couch cushion or a blanket or even just rolling your mat. And obviously you could sit however is best for you. In the morning, sometimes the body's quite stiff. So um, yeah, just making sure you're comfortable uh, kneeling or with your legs out straight or even cross-legged if you're feeling that's okay this morning for your hips. And there's a playlist, like usual, and um, it's called Prana is the playlist this morning. So if you might like to put the playlist on and um, just have your block sort of close-ish to your mat so that when we need it, you won't have to go searching for it. And then you could just settle in to your body and breath, closing your eyes if you like, and um, just watching your natural inhale and exhale. So over the last couple weeks, we've been looking at our various dimensions of prana and there are five of them. They're called the five uh, prana values. <clears throat> and this morning we are looking at um, the Vayu, which is called Prana. So of course, Prana is our vital life force, but Prana Vayu is just a little bit different in that this is uh, governing all the ways that we take energy in. So inhalation is uh, probably the most important vehicle for absorbing Prana, but we also draw our energy in from other sources, such as foods, drinks, um, also through our sensory experience. So last week we explored uh, Samana Vayu, which is how we assimilate those things. And this morning, are we looking at how we take those, how we first get those things into our body? So we're gonna begin practice uh, with a, a short pranayama, which is really focusing on the inhalation. And um, this is the three-part inhale. So what I mean by that is that we. We, we try to take a little third of the breath and then a pause and then another bit more in and then a pause and then we finish that inhale. So I like to think about this um, visually as a straw. So you know you could have a, I mean I know straws, we're not really supposed to use them anymore, but we can visualize them. And if you have a straw in a glass of water, you might sip a little bit in and then just pause and then sip more and sip more so you can watch the a liquid fill into the straw and it's the same sort of idea with the breath so when your next inhale is coming just sip a little breath in through the nose and then just pause keep your lips closed then sip a little bit more in and then a pause and then let the rest of that air come in and then when you're ready to exhale it open your mouth and <sighs> sigh your breath out the mouth so next inhale, taking a little bit of air, then a pause, then a little more, and then that final inhale to finish. Open the mouth. <sighs> Keep going. So we breathe a third of the breath, then just pause. Then we take a little more inhale and then we finish off the full inhale. And when you're ready to exhale, you're gonna open your mouth and sigh your breath away. Keep going with that. Trying to not create tension, so it could doesn't have to be a super long inhale, but you could still dissect it that little bit.
So some sources place the home of Pranavayu physically in the area of the chest, linking it with your heart chakra. This is Anahata. Um, but also some believe that the Pranavayu really naturally arising in the area of your Ajna chakra. This is that third eye, that space between your eyebrows. <clears throat> And this also governs your attention, your intuition. So that can also be linked to your sensory system. So with this focus on inhalation, this value is uplifting and enlivening you with a sense of confidence, optimism, and vitality. So we're going to use the breath as a guide to take a little journey through the senses and also leading to a heart opening practice. So have a couple more rounds of this sipping of your breath, this three part inhale. One last cycle. When you finish your next exhale, just come back to breathing freely again. Come back to your natural breath. And just notice what you notice. Notice the breath. You might even start to tap into your senses, sort of what you're hearing in your space, maybe even what you're smelling in the morning. You might have a nice smell of tea or coffee or something. So just really thinking about how you're taking everything in this morning. And then you might just start to add your vision to this sensory experience. So you might just barely open the eyes so that they're almost closed, but you can sort of just see a little bit through your eyelashes and you might start to allow the light to slowly come in and maybe every breath they open a little more until your eyes are adjusted again to the space you're in. And from here, we're going to come onto the hands and knees and you're going to grab your block or book or whatever you've got there. <clears throat> now we're going to take the block and we're going to balance it on the sacrum. So your sacrum is the flattest part of your back. So your spine sort of ends there and then it says that's a flat little triangle bone and then it kind of goes into your into your butt really. So it's not your spine because we don't want to put it on the spine. We want to just rest it on that flattest bit and we're going to put it on the medium height. So the thin narrow part if you're using a yoga block, but if you're using a book or anything, and I don't know the kind of dimensions of it, just put it on so that it feels sort of the easiest option. And then we're just going to try to um, not let the block fall off. So this is going to really give you a sort of a tactile feedback to keep your hips aligned. So we're going to pull the belly up and in. So spread the shoulders across the back by pushing the hands as hard as you can into the mat and switching on your core muscles and then just see if you could sneak your right leg out straight. And you might stay there with your toes touching. My block's already fallen off. Or you could lift your foot up off the floor. And when your foot comes off the floor, you can stay just like this or you could add the option of stretching your left arm out. And don't stop breathing here. So keep taking in your prana, nice slow inhales, nice slow exhales. And then we can start to bring the hand down and then also the knee. This is where you might find, I can already feel my block wanting to go. And then we can reset to the other side. So just trying to balance that block on your sacrum and slide your left leg away. So we have to really switch the glutes on here to keep your hips. If you have really flexible hips, it's extra hard. So flexibility sometimes occurs. So lift your left toes off the floor if you want. 
And final option, extend that right arm out too. And try not to hold the breath. And then the hand coming down and then the knee. And then you could sit back to child pose. So just take your block away, sit back to your heels, lengthen the spine, have a breath or two. And then let's come back onto our hands and knees. So you can do the exact same thing on the exact same setting, that thin part, or if you want to up the challenge, you could try to put it on the highest setting there. So the, there's a, the base of the block is a much smaller space. So you have to really, first of all, sometimes your clothes can get in the way here, depending on where your um, pants come to. If you have like a thick band, that might be more problematic but just giving it a go, doing the exact same thing again. So from hands and knees, we try to kick the right leg out without letting that block fall. And then we can lift the foot just barely off the floor. My block's falling all over the place this morning. So I did a much better job of this in Monday class, which of course I wasn't recording, so of course it would be perfect. <laughs> So choosing, if it feels too hard to go on the high setting, I'm going to keep mine on medium now because our bodies are different in the morning than they are at night. And then we're going to come back and do the other side. So if you do, we do this a lot in class. This is a really great core strengthener, I think. But actually, we're not tapping into the right muscles if our hips are hiked. So this is a really good way to learn where your hips are. So with, if your uh, block is falling off all the time, it might mean that left hip hiking up a little bit. So it can find your glutes a bit better. And then we're gonna bring the hand and the knee back down to the mat. And then we're gonna sit back to the heels and you know, hang out in child pose for a breath or two. Now let's come back up onto the hands and knees. Grab your block, place it between your inner thighs, squeeze the block or book or whatever you've got, tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back. So we're in downward facing dog and you're gonna squeeze the block. So we wanna, we forget very often in down dog that we need to connect to the pelvic floor and low belly. So as you squeeze that block, hopefully you can feel that drawing up from the pelvic floor into the low belly, but also from your feet. So we wanna feel that connection starting with our feet, which are really the foundation of the posture because the hands are secondary. So bend your knees a little bit if you need to. Think about pulling up from the inner arches of your feet, wake up that inside line of the leg all the way up to the inner thighs, pelvic floor, and of course, breathing. So again, we get that little tactile sensory experience with the block, but we're going to remove it in a second. Try not to lose the connection. So when you're ready, you could start to lift your right or left hand up, pull your block away, bring your hand back. Try to keep that connection to the legs, the pelvic floor, the low belly. And then let's make our way forward. So stepping or walking your way, grab your block again, put it back between your inner thighs, let yourself fold down here, and just taking nice deep breaths into the back of your heart, and squeezing that block, so forward fold, exactly the same as down dog, as all of our postures, that connection from the feet, through the legs, to the pelvic floor, to the belly. And then again, let's just take the block away, see if you can Keep that without that tactile sense there. And when you breathe in, we're gonna push the ground away and rise up to stand. Let your palms come together. Exhale, we're gonna bring the hands in front of the heart. So let's breathe in, reach up nice and tall 
As you breathe out, dive your way down to your legs, back into that full forward bend. Then we're gonna inhale, reach the heart forward, tailbone long, and then next breath, sink back to the legs, hands under the shoulders, stepping back into plank. Let's just pause here in plank and have a couple breaths. So thinking about pulling up from the belly, pushing the floor away, nice, slow breathing. And then we can lower the knees, bend those elbows back, come down to the tummy, and maybe even just let the hands come up with you. So inhale, tiny little lift. So we just let the spine warm up. We don't force it with the hands. And then we can lower back down. Now maybe 50% pressure into your hands and just gentle coil up and then slowly lower. This time you might come into maybe 80% with the hands. So just letting the spine ease into cobra and then lower down, tuck your toes, press back, downward facing dog. <clears throat> Trying to remember that sensation when you have the block there, try to find it again, just by engaging through the feet and the legs. And of course, maybe the legs feeling really tight, so you could pedal the feet because we can't really connect to them if they're feeling super tight but hopefully by your last down dog, you really feel it. My first few down dogs always feel a little bit tight in the legs. And then with your next exhale, let's make our way forward, lengthen the spine, and then fold to the legs. And inhale, we're gonna power up to stand. Let the palms meet, exhale, Bring your hands to your heart. So let's take the right foot and try to pull it with your hand, but we're gonna try and kick it up towards your butt as much as you can. So you get the hamstring working and then just stretch it away again. And then pull it up and then release it. So last one, when we bring it up, we'll find the foot with the hand. And you can just take your left hand to your left hip or maybe both hands find that foot. And we just want to feel that we could kick into the hands and the hand could pull into the foot. And really trying to let the tailbone lengthen towards the floor so we get that same sensation in the low belly that we have when we squeeze the block. So you try to squeeze your inner thighs together here. And breathing. We could release the left arm, take it forward. And then you might just kick out a little bit into your hand so that the arm straightens maybe. So even here we have a tiny little back bend so we can breathe into the front of the body. Now when you release your right foot, because it's active, it shouldn't just drop. It should be able to kind of step its way back. So let go of that foot, try and step back into warrior one. So warrior one, front knees bent over the ankle, that back foot is at a little diagonal. And when you take your next exhale, let's just start to come forward so you can scoop up your block and then bring it up over your head. So my block is the long way or whatever book you have, and we're gonna press the hands, <clears throat> excuse me, into the block. Now you can do, you can make as much work as you want for yourself. So if I press like 20%, it's not so much. If I press 100%, then I can really feel my arms working. So don't want your elbows here. You want them in so that they're maybe even more narrow than your shoulders. And then if it's okay, we could start to just bring the block back. So some of you might be able to bring it all the way back, deep extension, but you wanna find your little sweet spot here in back bend where you don't feel any pinching in your back and you can take nice big inhales and exhales. So look to the breath, keep drawing the tailbone down, the breastbone up, breathing here. And then when you exhale, we're just gonna start to sink ourselves down towards the mat. You can use your block to rest your hands on, keep your front knee bent and just let yourself kind of drape over that leg so you can breathe into the back of the heart.
and then take your block with you as you start to stand your way back up. Step your back foot a little further away and then pivot so the heel comes in and we're gonna straighten the legs. So we're gonna do triangle legs. You're gonna use your block. You're gonna put your block in your front hand and you're gonna reach the arm. So you can imagine you're passing something to somebody. Remember when we, we could do that, pass things to people, <laughs> that's quite nice. So here, the flattest part is gonna be the first easiest option. Second, you can put it on the more narrow strip of your block. And the more difficult, again, on the palm of your hand. So we wanna to try to feel the arm is connected to the body. We forget about our arms, I think, in standing poses. So we're just gonna hit, sort of reach forward into triangle pose, but we're not gonna go past this. And we're just gonna keep breathing. Keep trying to plug that shoulder into your armpit. Keep it shoulder blade sort of attached down towards the rib cage. And we're just breathing here. Let yourself lean back in this posture. So even this, we could think about being able to breathe space into the heart. We don't wanna lose this alignment now. So our shoulders should be perfectly lined up, hips as best they can be lined up. And then we're gonna to start to bend your front knee and just take your block to your mat. Try not to let this top shoulder roll in and see if you could slide the back leg a little closer and maybe kick it up into Ardha Chandrasana. So Ardha Chandrasana is a little bit of a heart opener if you want it. So you could even bend this top leg and find the foot and open up. When you've had enough, kick it out, land it. Whoop. Not doing a very good job myself. And then we can spin ourselves around to take a vinyasa. So we're gonna step back to plank. And you can stay in plank, like normal plank, or maybe you wanna switch the feet. Come to the top of the foot, really feel the low belly, and then bend your knees, bend your elbows, come down. Of course, you don't have to bend your knees, you could just come straight down. Into your back bend, and then back to down dog. A couple breaths in down dog. We prepare to do the other side, which is always easier than the first side because we have a, more of an idea of what's coming. So next exhale, coming forward. We can just drape ourselves down to the legs, few breaths into the back of your heart. And then we're going to rise up. Let the palms touch. Exhale, hands come to the heart. So let's find that left foot. But first we're gonna use the hamstring. So bring it in, take it out. Kick it up, send it back. Third one, find your foot. Now squeeze your inner thighs, lengthen from hip to knee. Right hand could be to the hip. It might even hold the foot to get extra stretch in the thigh if you want it. Then we're gonna reach the right arm out, kick the left leg out. Now, because the left leg working strongly, when we release it, it's gonna just float back. And then you're in your warrior one. Same thing, front knee bends, back heel turns in slightly, and then we're gonna dive forward, scoop the block, squeeze the block up over the head. Draw down through your tailbone, lift up from your pelvic floor. Try to let those shoulders not crowd your neck. Start to bend your elbows. Keep your elbows hugging in here, not there. So it doesn't have to be the block very far back. You might even find it easier to keep that engagement forward. Breathing into the front of the heart. Next exhale, slowly, slowly, gonna bring yourself down. You can rest your hands on your block. And again, taking breaths into the back of the heart. So we think a lot about heart opening in yoga. It's always focusing on the front of the body, but actually we have the back body too. The heart sort of encompasses everything. And then let's push away, 
Come back up, step your back foot a little further away and then turn your heel in. So we have trikonasana legs. So feet make an L shape, try and straighten the legs. Reach your block, palm of the hand. It's gonna sit the fattest part, maybe the more narrow, maybe the highest part. We try to keep the arm connected. So we get the feedback, the tactile feedback from the block. And we're just reaching forward now. And we're trying to let the chest rise up towards the ceiling. So not like this, but opening up. And just reaching, reaching, reaching. Don't hold the breath. Now we can bend the front knee, place the block to the floor. Try not to lose what you've created here with your shoulder. So don't let that top shoulder fold in, keep it back. Slide the back leg a little closer. See if you could kick it up. Let yourself lean back. Maybe today isn't a balancing day. It certainly isn't for me. So don't be hard on yourself if it's not coming. If your balance is feeling good and you want to, you could find that back foot as well. So like we did standing at the front of the mat. And then we can reach the leg out, slowly step back, bring your hands to frame your front foot, and again, back to plank. We're gonna pause here in plank. So you can do your normal vinyasa, or you can follow along with me where I can change my feet so I'm at the top of my feet. And then I'm just gonna start to let my hips reach down and pull forward and try and lift my breastbone up, spread my collarbone wide, so I'm in up dog. Deeper back bend, then back to plank, bend the elbows, come to the tummy. And then just gonna coil up, again into cobra if you want, and then back this time to child pose. But if you love down dog, you might wanna go there first, and then come back to child pose. And just watch the breath, Start to slow itself down here. And we can breathe again into the back of the heart after that deeper back bend if you came along in up dog. And then from child pose, you could slowly bring yourself up. You might like to throw on a layer. And we're just gonna bring ourselves down to lie on the back. Take your block with you, or maybe instead like a blanket or pillow, something that's lighter if you're using not a traditional yoga block. When you come to your back, just keep your knees bent, take your feet wide, and then just maybe let the arms come out to a T shape or Maybe the elbows are bent, and we're just going to let the knees float from side to side. As your knees float, let your pelvis come too. And we just sort of swishing the legs back and forth like windshield wipers on your car, nice and slow. And when you take your final one, if you started on the right, you'll finish on the left. We could just stretch the legs out, bring the arms down by the side of the body. Take your block and just rest it on your belly and close your eyes in Shavasana. Of course, if you have something really heavy, it might not feel nice, but just putting the block there again, we get this little tactile feedback and we just can maybe feel the breath a little differently when you notice how your block just kind of moves up and down as your breath breathes your body.
open heart sees, feels, and absorbs the beauty of the world. The open heart sees, feels, and absorbs the beauty of the world. So if you're ready to come back, nice big inhale that can wake the body. And then letting some gentle movements come in. You might just move your block and just stay for a moment without the weight on your body. And then when you feel ready, the knees could come into the chest. You might give yourself a little rocking from side to side until you end up over on the right side. And here you might do that same thing with the eyes, a real slow opening, taking your time to bring that sense back. And then eventually, when you feel ready, you could come on up to sit. So thanks everybody, it's lovely to see you, namaste.